you had a lot of accurate predictions on, on betting that the market's going down. I mean, especially in 2007, you got a lot of press for Passport Capital's impressive showing when its flagship fund that ends up the year up about 219% from where it started. Now, could you tell us what strategies you implemented to make that happen? Yeah, about two-thirds of the profit came from uh, shorting subprime mortgages, the, basically the mezzanine triple B uh, tranches. Um, but that was a position we had initiated in October of 2005, and we lived with that for you know almost 18 months before we really started getting paid in the market for that. So it took a long time. You know, it, we, we, we saw it in starting in July of 2005, did some work, lined it up, put it on, and then had to suffer really with it until the market, basically until first payment defaults in January. You know, literally people who had taken out loans didn't make the first payment. That It took that level of um, of reality, you know, it's just so obvious for the market to actually start rejecting them. Um, so that was a key thing. Um, and then the other, you know, I, I tried to avoid the U.S. stock market because I thought it was a long bear market. So I started investing in resources, um, you know, in other countries like, you know, India and, and uh, Asia, Brazil, those kinds of things. And so my portfolio of commodities, you know, energy, metals mining, uh, India, other emerging markets uh, had a very good year. Um, the subprime shorts had a fantastic, um, finally had a fantastic uh, year. And then other shorts we had in financials and you know some other sectors in the United States. Um, you know, finally, finally started selling off after August of '07 when the commercial paper market broke down. So. Uh, that required a lot of patience. I mean, during that time, did you ever start to, to second guess the the wisdom of your prediction uh, as the as the the market was moving in the opposite ways of your prediction, or did you really, uh, I guess, stay true to that vision and, and never waver? Well, it's uh, it's interesting. The, so the risk reward of shorting a stock is really not that great. Um, you know, if you if you're absolutely right and it goes to zero the next day, you make a hundred percent, but if it goes up, you know, if it doubles, you lose 100%, and of course, it doesn't it doesn't stop if it just doubles. So, um, you know, assessing things as risk reward and probabilities is is where you really live if you're going to be a good investor. And what you know, what I knew about the subprime short was that we were you know, we owned insurance, so we were putting down. You know, at first it was 200 basis points over Treasuries, so essentially, you know, two percent, spending two percent a year. To insure against those uh, mortgages, and in '06, the it went from be, beginning of '06 to September of '06, it went from 200 to 100 basis points over Treasuries, the cost of, uh, of protection. So it cost only one percent uh, then. Of course, I lived with the, you know, losing. Um, I would sized it very, very large, and so I had to lose. Um, you know, it was it was high single digits uh, in terms of return. But I knew the the risk reward was the same um, um, and wasn't going to get worse. So, in fact, it was getting better as it went down. The problem that, that in '06 was that it didn't. Everything else during the summer was going down, emerging markets, commodities, etc. Yet the subprime short tightened, credit literally tightened. So that was the biggest soul searching. Um, but I'd had a number of years leading up. It, was my study in, in commodities and emerging markets. I was really fundamentally believing these uh, these um, sectors and companies that had very little debt, um, where I believed there was scarcity and great growth. I thought these are these are going to turn around. But um, at least a subprime short, unlike a short an equity short that will go up against you and you have to keep putting up money, um, I knew that it was, a, it was a limited loss. So I was able to hold on to uh, the, the, both sides of the trade. Despite losing about 20% from May of 06 to September of 06, it was very painful to watch the mark the, the, the mark to market change and watch liquidity, you know, coming out of the things that I thought would go up a lot, which they did in 07, and the market actually, you know, money pour into tightening the spreads on what the worst credit around I thought, which was subprime. But this is so that was very painful, and I determined. Um, 
after getting getting a call from my Vegas investor August of '06 that they were going to take out, uh, they're going to start redeeming and take out, you know, 20, 25 percent of their money of my fund. It was it was very interesting. I, I actually I knew something bad was going to happen because I was losing that much money, and then I decided, you know what, this doesn't change reality. It's it has nothing to do with the reality. It's just the this is how the market works. You know, when someone loses money, they want to sell something. Someone making money, they they want to put more money in. And they were just, you know, they, they were just deciding to do what is, is normal for investors. And I decided that I can't change reality. This is what I think reality is. And I made a decision that I'm just going to stick with my guns, um, you know, try to protect if I could, not take excessive risk. But uh, that was a, an enormous uh, moment because had, uh, had I caved in, you know, never would have had 2007's return. Thank you for listening to the Benzinga Podcast. This is part one of two. Be sure to stay tuned to the Benzinga Podcast to catch the second half of this conversation. Once again, the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to our podcast in iTunes. You can find a link off of the Benzinga homepage. That's B-E-N-Z-I-N-G-A dot com. The music that you're listening to is Beethoven Virus by Banya and is available on the Internet Archive. The Benzinga Podcast is released under a Creative Commons, Attribution, Sharealike, 3.5 license, and all other rights are reserved.